Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball, as it is Tuesday, June 20th, and today, the 2-1 and one Ashland Post 77 welcomes an 0-1 oh Lowell Post 87, and we are set for Ashland Legion action on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call. Connor Donovan on camera for what should be a great game of Ashland Legion Baseball. Stepping in is the first hitter for Lowell, Freddie Kozalski, the center fielder. Jonathan Pesson on the mound for post 77. It is an 81 degree evening here at Ashland Middle School as the bunt pulled back and the count is one and oh. Let's take a look at the post 77 diamond. Jonathan Pesson is the pitcher. Sean Jewett behind the plate. Zach Pesson over at first base. Ethan Tominski at second base. Is that pitch in there for a strike? At shortstop, it's Jackson Horning. Third base, Dylan O'Leary from left to right. Jake Obid, Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas for post 77. The windup and the pitch. Upstairs, two and one. We'll take a look at the Lowell lineup. Freddie Kozowski, the center fielder, leading things off right now. Max Gilman, the shortstop, batting second. Thomas Crowley, the catcher, batting third. Zach Gishier is in the cleanup role, the left fielder. That pitch is low, three and one. Mark Beeland, the third baseman, batting fifth. Johnny Donovan, the second baseman, batting sixth. Batting seventh is the pitcher, Matt Smith. Derek Theralt, the first baseman, batting eighth. Chris Ward, the right fielder, batting ninth. For Lowell Post 87. As this is hit in the air, high in the air, over to right center. Both fielders ranging over, but making the catch is Brad Seymour. And there is one away in this top of the first. It's always the center fielder's ball when in doubt. I'll bring up Max Gilman, the shortstop. First start of the season for Jonathan Pesson. His brother Zach Pesson had a start in that Natick game. That one inside. Corner for a strike, 0 oh and 1. Leg left and the pitch. There's strike two to the lefty. Set to deliver. That one just inside to the right-handed shortstop. One and two is the count. Two and two now. Jake Obid spent his day at orientation at University of Massachusetts at Amherst and found the dining hall, the world's famous number one in the country dining hall. We'll be spending quite a bit of time in there, I have a feeling. That one fouled away. Cloudy skies above us, some ominous looking clouds, but no rain on the radar according to the HCAM Weather Center, so things look good for this one as that one's out of play. Count remains two and two. But the weather has been pretty nice this month, especially compared to what it was in May. Just wreaking havoc all high school season long. Up the left side on the ground, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Six to three goes Gilman, two away. I'll bring up the catcher, Thomas Crowley. Jackson's a slick failing shortstop. I predict the colleges by next year, we'll be looking at him. Good hitter as well, as we have seen in this young post-77 season. Wind up and the pitch down low. He's got speed to steal bases as well, so he's at least a four-tool player. One zero pitch, up the middle it goes. Glove once again by the shortstop. Throw to first, 
And for the second straight time, it's six to three. One, two, three, they go. No runs in the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. Just about ready for the bottom of the first inning as Ashland will come up for their first time this evening. Let's take a look at the Ashland batting order. J Jackson Horning, the shortstop, leading things off. Ronan Bates, the DH, batting second. Jake Obid is in left field, batting third. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, in the cleanup role. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, batting fifth. Dylan O'Leary, the third baseman, batting sixth. Sean Jewett, the catcher, batting seventh. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, batting eighth. Ethan Tominski, the second baseman, batting ninth. And Jonathan Pesson, the pitcher, odd man out of the batting order. As far as the Lowell Diamond, it's Matt Smith on the mound. Thomas Crowley, the catcher behind home plate. Derek Theralt at first base. Johnny Donovan at second base. Max Gilman, the shortstop at third base. Mark Beeland from left to right. Zach Gishier, Freddie Kozalski, and Chris Ward in right field for Lowell, post 87, who is looking for their first win on the young season. They are 0 and 1 so far. Most of their players out of the Lowell area, and I believe Lowell had a pretty long run in the high school baseball playoffs as well, so their season got a little bit delayed. As post 77 set to come up. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, leading things off. He was busy defensively in the top half of the first, making two ground out plays. Matt Smith set to deliver. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Line up and the pitch, fouled away, 0-2. Horning will be a junior next year during the high school season, hit a 419 with the Ashland Clockers. Drove in 17 runs, scored 27, and had a home run to his credit. Line up and the pitch, down low. That looked like a really good pitch, Tom. One and two to Horning. Hits the sign he likes and deals. That one low, two and two. Smith trying to work with uh, Pesson's uh, landing spot there. Line up and the pitch. Up the middle it goes to the second baseman who bobbles it and Horning will beat it out. The throw gets away. He's going to head to second. So he reaches on the error, then goes the second on the overthrow. And Ashland has a runner in scoring position with Ronan Bates, the DH, coming up. A slight bobble by the second baseman. Maybe he lifted his head up and the ball just touched his glove, didn't look it into his glove. Give him one error on that or two, Larry? No. He did bobble it, and then he had the overthrow. Two errors. Yeah. Okay. Coach Johnson says two. We'll go with two. <laughs> As Ronan Bates takes strike one, 0 and 1 on the DH. I agree with him, though. That's two separate mistakes. That's two errors. That one's fouled away, 0 and 2. Sometimes the infielder will take a look at where the runner is relative to first base, and that causes them to bobble the ball, trying to get it out quick. Horning a dangerous base runner as well, taking a little bit of a lead off of second as that one's fouled away. Smith had a long, nice stare at him. I like that Jackson is not going back to the bag, which typically runners do. They go back to the bag even when nobody's holding them on. They can cheat an extra step or two. 
Ronan Bates also had a big role with the Ashland Clockers 14 and 8 season. He hit a 345, the wind up and the pitch. And that is fouled away. Runner started taking off from second, but we'll have to go back. Bates scored 20 runs during the high school season, drove in nine, had five doubles. Steps back in the right-handed batter's box, takes one up high, one and two. Jackson's been taught well as base running. A little bit windy today at Ashland Middle School. Storms passing to the north of us. Hopefully not hitting us. Is that one up high? Two and two. And it has been a stormy few days for post 77. They had a rain out Friday and then Saturday was postponed. I don't believe it was due to weather. And then in Sudbury on Monday, they got suspended after three innings because of rain as there is strike three, one away. Breaking pitch gets Bates looking, and that'll bring up Jake Ovid with one on, one out. The righty hitter, I think Jackson's got a chance to uh, swipe the bag. There's a strike. It's tough for a catcher to throw around a right-handed hitter. And even tougher trying to hit a moving target, the third baseman. Runner with a pretty big lead off of second. Smith takes a look at second and deals. A breaking pitch for strike two. That would have been the pitch to run on that slow breaking ball. Smith set to deliver. Fouled away into the backstop. Morning once again leading off of second, Smith deals. There's strike three, gets Obed looking. Second straight strikeout for Matt Smith. I'll bring up Ben Thomas, the cleanup hitter and the right fielder. Lefty awaits the pitch. Fouled away, 0-1. And Thomas is going to be a senior next year. This year for Holliston High School, he batted a 344, scoring 15 runs, driving in 17. Going to tr try to drive one in right here as that one's up high, one and one. Shall Thomas reach? It'll be Zach Pesson up next. Runner leading off of second. As this is a little bloop shot, takes a hop in front of the second baseman, throw to first, not in time, everybody's safe. Horning moves up to third, Thomas is safe on the infield single, and that'll bring up Zach Pest in the first baseman. Second baseman could have put a, put a little harder charge on that ball, as Thomas is not blessed with uh, Greyhound speed. And Smith not showing the, uh, or excuse me, Johnny Donovan not showing the most experience over at that second base position. As Zach Pesson steps in. Both runners on the corners, leading off the bags. There's a strike. Zach Pesson hit a 292 for Holliston High School this spring. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away. 0-2. Played in 18 games during the regular season. Scored six runs, drove in 11. Both runners on the corners leading off. Smith looks at first. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs, the throw up and the steal attempt is going to be caught. Thomas caught stealing. 
And that will be the third out of the first inning. And we will head to the second. It is scoreless between Lowell and Ashland. Top of the second inning, four, five, and six do up for Lowell. Zach Gishier, the left fielder to start things off. Followed by Mark Bielan, the third baseman, and Johnny Donovan, the second baseman. Jonathan Pesson set for his second inning of work after a one, two, three first inning. As this is hit in the air, it is in foul territory. Is it catchable? Yes, it is. Dylan O'Leary makes the play. That'll bring up Mark Bielan, the third baseman. Ashland post 77, led by head coach Derek Johnson. Second year of service with the team. No one outside. As this is hit up the middle, that'll get through for a base hit. And Beeland is aboard a one out single. For a low post 87, they are led by head coach Billy Martell, assisted by Kyle Lath and Nick Ryan. As that'll bring up Johnny Donovan, the second baseman. Hit in the air to left field, a high fly ball. Ranging under it to make the catch is Obid, and he will throw it in quickly to keep Beeland at first. A good play in left field. Two away, and that'll bring up the pitcher, Matt Smith. Runner leading off of first. Pitch is low. Good block by Jewett behind the plate. One and O. Oh. Wind up in the pitch runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be not in time. I don't know about that one, Larry. Well, I think he got him on the chest. Didn't get him. Didn't get the his glove down on the bag. Always better to put your glove in front of the bag and let them slide into it rather than get them on some part of their uniform. All right, I'll take your word for that one. Gonna have to. We don't have the uh, review system up and running yet. All right, if you want to put it in replay, <laughs> you can put it in replay. I agree with you, though. The tag, the attempted tag was in the chest area, so the ump did have a good view of it, so I think... You must be right, as there's a strike. I don't know who has more velocity on his pitches. Um, Zach Pesson, the uh, younger Pesson. 2-2 Two -two pitch. As this is hit up the line and handled by O'Leary. Looks like he got that towards the top of the bat. And that will wrap up the top of the second inning. We will head to the bottom of the second. Lowell and Ashland are scoreless. A defensive change for Lowell post 87. The left fielder, Zach Gishier, has moved over to second base. And the starting second baseman, Johnny Donovan, has swapped into left field. And that comes after Donovan made a couple of errors on the same play in the first inning and also bobbled the. Uh, Another pitch, or a, uh, another hit as well. So I think that was a pretty smart move by Coach Martell. Almost cost him a run in that first inning. So they're hoping to fix that problem pretty quickly. As Zach Pest in the first baseman steps in, 5, 6, and 7 for post 77. That one's fouled away, 0 oh, and 1. I think Smith has got to work out that pitcher's mound area to get a spot that he wants to land in. He does have excellent velocity and nice leg extension. Wind up in the pitch. There's strike two. Smith has two strikeouts so far. 
both of them came looking. Hit in the air, in foul territory. Is it catchable? No. Count remains 0-2. You got the book on Smith as whether he's a college boy or whether he just graduated high school? I do not. There's not a lot of uh, rosters available for uh, Zone 5 right now. They're working on their website as that one's upstairs. So we have to kind of just rely on the information we get from the coaches before the game. Well, they've got to July 20th or so to do that. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to right field, and it is bobbled and dropped. So Pesson will reach on the air. Ward had a range over to make that play, but it was right in his glove, just could not hold on, and Dylan O'Leary will come up with one on. Can't blame it on the sun. There is none right now. Right. Just was a little lax on that ball. Third error of the game for Lowell as the lefty steps in. You're not going to give Donovan three errors in that last inning? There's a strike. I don't want to be cruel or anything, but well, two errors on that one play. and then No, the, I gave that a single. He didn't touch the ball. He just uh, did not run fast enough to get to it. He underplayed it. Checking at first, yeah. and the throw is going to get away. Pesson's going to take off and head to second, and he might go to third. He'll stay put at second, probably the right call there. But taking advantage of the situation. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Nice backup by Matt Smith, backing up third base. What a potential throw. The boys in the dugout. Uh, wanted Pesson to run for it. Run third, that is. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike there. Blows it by him 0 2. From the stretches, Smith, runner leading off of second. Feels outside to O'Leary. 1 and 2. Runner leading off of second. Upstairs, two and two. I don't think Peston will be going anywhere. Catcher looks like he's got a pretty good hose and with Dylan O'Leary up. There's strike three. Third strikeout of the game for Matt Smith. He'll bring up Sean Jew at the catcher. He might be my team dirt dog. He's been impressive behind the plate. Be a junior next year at Holliston High School. That one's fouled away. Did not get much experience this year for the Holliston team. Only played in two games and got two at bats. But getting all kinds of experience here with post 77. You know how difficult it is to find a good catcher. Right, and he's been solid behind the plate. Had a great throw today and nearly caught Belen stealing. As this is hit in the air, foul territory, and it'll drop. Good effort by the third baseman. Had to come a long way for that. And he almost got to it. The 0-2 pitch. Smith set to deal. Upstairs it goes. Back got away from him a little bit. Goes almost to the backstop. Two up next is Brad Seymour. Runner leading off of second. There's strike three. Got him looking. A breaking pitch right in there. 
Fourth strikeout of the day for Matt Smith. Looks like he's got a couple of different breaker balls, a s slow one and a biting one. That was a slow one. There's a fastball low, 1-0. Runner leading off of second, Smith deals. Looked like he was trying to check his swing, but couldn't hold one and one. Smith set to deliver. Up the left side and dropped by the third baseman. Runner will hold at third. And with two outs, there's runners on the corners. We have that a single. That's a tough play to make in an awkward roll. But it's certainly uh, go either way, I think, with that one. Well, I thought it was relatively easy, but this is not their home field. Got to give Ashland a hit here and there. Ethan Tominski will step in. The Glow has the case of the bobbles. Runner taking off from first, and there will be no throw up. Smart move by Thomas Crowley. I think he knew exactly what post 77 was trying to do there. They were going to send Pesson home. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Another good block by the catcher. Yeah, you got two pretty good catchers in this game, that's for sure. Wind up and the pitch as this is chopped up the right side and caught by the first baseman who had a back pedal. And that will wrap up the second inning. We are scoreless as we head to the top of the third on WACA and HCAM. Top of the third inning, eight, nine, and one due up for Lowell. Derek Theralt, the first baseman, Chris Ward, the right fielder, and Freddie Kozalski, the center fielder. Face Jonathan Pesson, who has pitched pretty solid in the first two innings. There is warm up action going on behind us. Looks like Tom Onzi. There's a strike. Sporting some new facial hair, college. Pesson gets the sign and deals. Nice breaking pitch there. Had the batter fooled 0 and 2. That one had a big drop to it. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the left side, gloved by O'Leary. Throw to first, got him. Got him by half a step. Showed pretty good speed for a big guy. Chris Ward, the right fielder, will now step in. Up and the pitch. Breaking pitch up high, 1 0. Wasn't quite as sharp with that breaking pitch. Must have been a slip. He deals. That one upstairs, 2 0. Jewett didn't even bother jumping out of his crouch. We know that was air mailed. Lowell Post 87 went to the state tournament last season. And they had a pretty deep run as well. As this is hit in the air, that'll drop into left field in front of Obed. And that is a one out single for the right fielder, Chris Ward. That'll bring up Freddie Kozalski, the center fielder. Lowell went 17 and two overall. They won zone five last season. They went three and zero in the double elimination playoffs. 
Runner leading off of first. There's a strike to the leadoff hitter. Looked like a little slide step from Pessim. Pittsfield post-68 beat Lowell in the state final in 2015, and they beat Lowell in the playoffs last year as there's a strike, 0-2. Lowell would love to have another shot at a state tournament run. Runner leading off of first as this is hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field, ranging over to make the catch is Seymour. Runner will stay put at first. Two away, one on. Max Gilman to the plate. Runner leading off of first. Looks like Coach Johnson's got a spray chart there. And this is up the left side. That'll trickle into left field, and that's going to be a two-out base hit for Gilman. Two on, two outs. Ward up to second. That'll bring up the third hitter in the lineup, catcher Thomas Crowley. Three hits so far for Lowell. Runners leading off. That one low and a nice job by Jewett behind the plate. Wind up in the pitch. Up the left side, slow roller, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, got him. Nice play by Horning. The 6-3 to three will retire the side in the top of the third. To the bottom of the inning we go. Lowell and Ashland are scoreless at Ashland Middle School. Bottom of the third inning. Top of the order for post 77. Jackson Horning, Ronan Bates, and Jake Obed. To face Matt Smith, who so far on this evening has four strikeouts. Lowell has been plagued by errors, four errors for Lowell. They're certainly going to have to tone it down a little bit defensively, because that one's up high. Sean Babineau warming up right behind me, the lefty. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to right field, battling the sun a little bit, but making the catch is Chris Ward. One away. I'll bring up Ronan Bates, the DH. A designated hitter steps in. Leg lift and the pitch. Upstairs. Set to deliver. And this is up the middle just by the pitcher. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to first. He got him. 4-3. Two away, and Jake Obed will step in. And that was Johnny Donovan who started the game at left field. Now over at second base. Wind up and the pitch, upstairs. Ashland so far is making it easy for Smith. They might want to use a patience approach. Set to deliver. And this is up the left side. That drops in, past the left fielder. It goes, and rounding first over to second. Still tracking it down in left field. He'll throw to the cutoff man, and Obid's going to end up at third base. So, oh, oops, sorry, Larry. Uh, I'll give Obit a single on that and then the third on the error. It's closer to play at third than I thought. Yeah, very close. It ended up hitting him in the leg, but 
he slid and uh, knocked the base away from him. But he clearly hit the base first, so a good call. But with two outs, Obed over at third. Ben Thomas, the cleanup hitter, to step in. Thomas reached on a single his only time up in this game in the first inning. Looks like the left fielder was hoping for a hop, trying to read it, and it went right under his glove. Wind up and the pitch. And it will roll quite a bit if you let it buy you out there. That one's fouled away. 328 to the left field fence, 360 to center. Then over to right field. It's in the 340s. Wind up and the pitch. There's a called strike, one and two. Babineau's preparing with his stretch with his legs, so he may be going in this inning. Up the middle, takes a couple hops on the grass, and it is going to be a no play for the shortstop, and a run will score. Obid scores as Lishier just could not get it out of his glove. An RBI single for Ben Thomas. 1-0, post 77, and now Zach Pesson will step in. Runner leading off of first, that one is low. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. Well, with this pitching matchup so far, Larry, looks like this game could be determined by who makes the mistakes, and right now it's Lowell making the mistakes. Whoever makes the fewest ever errors wins the game might be the... Uh, Obed just smiled. Up the middle it goes, and that'll get by the shortstop. Everyone's going to be safe. Thomas up to second, passing over to first. That one took an awkward bounce, but I'll give him a single on that one. Well, It's debatable, however. Same infield for both teams. And now the head coach and the catcher will come out and talk to Matt Smith, and it's got to be tough for Smith because he's throwing a good game, but it's really his field that's making a lot of mistakes. Already five errors in the ball game for Lowell. <laughs> I don't mean to chuckle. Some of those have been really tough plays, but he went to his backhand on that, just didn't get it, and he went to the forehand and was able to stop a ball from going into center field. We'll see if Dylan O'Leary can take advantage of the situation as he is set to step in. Ashland's left four base runners on, two in each of the first two innings. Smith dealing from the stretch, both runners leading. That one inside, 1-0. One and oh. That one outside, 2-0. and oh. It'll get by the catcher, and both runners are going to advance one. The pass ball allows Thomas and Pesson to both advance. It's now Pesson at second, Thomas at third. Dylan can make some hay here with a, a base hit. Wind up and the pitch. Outside, inside and low, 3-0. and oh. He'll have a take sign on, I'm quite sure of that. Absolutely. Two outs in the inning, two on. That one is a strike, I guess, three and one. And there's the walk. Good eye by O'Leary, and now you got bases loaded. Two outs, however. Sean Jewett, the catcher to the plate. 
Let's take a look at the District 5 standings. Natick 3-0 on the season. Waltham is 2-0. Sudbury 2-0. Ashland 2-1. North Chelmsford 2-2. Bill Ricca 1-1. More after this pitch. That one is low. 1-0. Newton 1-3. Medford 1-3. Lowell is 0-1. And, and Hudson 0-3. Those are the District 5 Legion Baseball standings. As this is hit in the air. And that is going to range over to the right side and be caught in foul territory by Derek Theralt, the first baseman. And despite the fact the bases were loaded, no runs will come out of that last series, but they did plate one in the inning, and it is a 1-0 post-77 lead as we head to the fourth. Top half of the fourth inning, a 1-0 lead for Ashland, a new pitcher for post-77. Sean Babineau is in the game to take over for Jonathan Pesson. And Pesson pitched a solid three innings. But he will come out. It could be because of the loaded post-77 schedule this week. They play tomorrow, Friday, and Sunday coming up. As Zach Gishier, the second baseman who started the game at left fielder, will step in. He flew out his last time up. Ashland's left seven men on base the first three innings, so it could be much different score. That one is low, one and oh. Line up and the pitch. And this is chopped up the right side foul, one and one. Four, five, and six this inning for Lowell. Line up and the pitch. That one low, two and one. Babineau, a pretty hard thrower. Or post 77 is this one is a fair ball on the dirt the throw up the line he got him nice play by Jewett one to three on the out or two to three excuse me and that'll bring up Mark Beeland Jewett did everything right on that one popped out of his crouch flung off the mask grabbed the ball and threw it threw to first base I really like that kid check swing couldn't hold there's a strike He is certainly turning into a very solid catcher. And I'm not quite sure about his uh, Holliston history. Perhaps he caught a number of games and just wasn't in the batting order, which is why he doesn't have those hitting stats. Oh, and two. And I'm getting word that he played on JV most of the season. As this is chopped into center field, that'll drop in for a base hit. Ball had a lot of blood on that one. One out single. That'll bring up Johnny Donovan. That low base runner better not stray too far because Babineau has an excellent move to first base. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Donovan flew out his last time up in the second inning. Runner leading off of first. Swinging strike there, throw up the line. Almost got him, runner back safe. In a one-run game, I, I don't recommend back picking. Only bad things can happen. And check over at first, he's got him picked off. And now they throw to second, they got him with ease. Two away. And there you go, Larry. Just exactly what you said. Look out for Babineau's pickoff move. There's a prime example. It's very difficult for a hitter to pick up, especially if he got a sign to go on first move. But I think it was an outright pick. Line up in the pitch, upstairs. One and two. 
Babineau graduated Ashland High School in 2016. As this is going to be handled by Babino, the flip to first, not a problem. One to three on the out, and we will head to the bottom of the fourth. Post 77 leading Lowell, one to nothing on HCAM in Hopkinton or WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the fourth inning, eight, nine, and one for. Post 77, Brad Seymour, the center fielder, to start things off, followed by Ethan Tominski, the second baseman, and Jackson Horning, the shortstop. Matt Smith still in the game for Lowell. And he is set to deal. He's pitched a relatively good game, but Lowell has been in a little bit of trouble due to errors as that pitch low, 1-0. It'd be nice if they could build up some runs for Babineau. That one low as well, 2-0. Smith seems to self-correct if he throws a couple balls really low, comes back with a strike. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. Just like that. Set to deal. And this is going to be right back to the pitcher. Flip to first, no problem. Please score that one to three, Tom. One to three. Ethan Tominski will step in. Tominski, of course, out of Ashland High School. He's played second base, shortstop. Play a number of positions. Strike one. The 0 1 pitch. And that is tipped foul. The 0 2 pitch. That is low, one and two. Set to deliver. That's fouled away. Count remains one and two. We talked about this earlier off air about second baseman in their size. He's 5'7, 128 pounds. Good eye there. Two and two is the count. And this is hit in the air, right side, foul out of play. Shade now starting to cover the entire baseball diamond. A little bit of sun left in right field, but not too much. That one upstairs, good eye there, full count. And this has been a relatively lengthy affair. Got off to a little bit of a late start. As this is up the middle, just past the pitcher, takes a couple of awkward hops and then bounces off the arm of the second baseman. And Tominski is aboard with a one out single. Would never have got him anyway. Nope, too much speed coming up the line and that'll bring up Jackson Horning. Horning over two today, reached on an error in the first and flew out in the third. Coach Johnson giving him the signs over at first base. He's got a pretty healthy lead over there. Certainly a threat. Checking at first, he slides back. He got back really easy, so he may cheat and get an extra half a step. 
Minsky was another JV guy at Ashland for the most part as this is hit in the air to deep right center and that'll drop in front of both fielders and Tominski will be held up at third and it is going to be second and third with one out for post 77. Horning tattooed that ball out there and it looked like it was going to end up more of a shallow hit but then just kind of drifted further into the outfield. And it is a double for Horning. And that's the reason why the colleges will be around here next year to look at Jackson. Showing off his power. As they should be. Quite an impressive player on both sides of the ball. Great sound defensive shortstop and a very good hitter. And I'd imagine Matt Smith will stay in the game here. The coach talking to him. Giving him some words of confidence along with the post-87 infield. Now you have Ronan Bates stepping in, the DH, pretty dangerous hitter. One out, two on. Runners on second and third. Strike one. Smith pitching out of the full windup. Runners on second and third. Smith deals. Upstairs it goes. The 1-1. One, one. Swinging strike blazes it by him, one and two. Catcher took a quick look at Tominski. See how far he got down the line. Upstairs. No warm up action for Lowell. I'm not sure what the catcher was going to throw down. His body is on a 90 degree angle. That pitch took an awkward dip for ball three. Three and two. And that is hit in the air, foul out of play. Catcher doesn't have to be in that 90 degree angle with runners at second and third. He's gonna worry about just blocking the ball. Line up in the pitch. Strike three, Bates didn't like it. He thought he had the walk. Two away, and that will bring up Jake Obid, the left fielder, who's one for two today. Single didn't score to run in the third. Now the coach back out, and it looks like we might have a pitching change here. Or maybe not, just a discussion, but he did signal towards right field, and I think, yeah, we are going to have a change. It looks like the right fielder is going to come in and maybe pitch. Or perhaps, yeah, we're going to have a change here. So while we have a pitching change, we'll take a timeout. It is two outs for post 77. They have runners on second and third. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or H. Cam in Hopkinton. New pitcher for Lowell Post 87. The right fielder Chris Ward takes over. And the starting pitcher Matt Smith. Now playing right field, Jake Obit at the plate. Two outs, two on, runners on second and third. Wind up and the pitch. Outside, one and oh. Pretty surprising they took out Matt Smith. He was pitching well this game and looked like he might be able to get out of that jam. But they made the change. We'll see if it works, one and one. He might have been on some type of pitch count based on their schedule. Looks like the Ashton coach is gonna try and cobble at least two guys together. That one low, two and one. Yeah, and with a few rainouts for everyone throughout the zone, there is certainly a lot of games coming up in the next couple of weeks. 
That one low, three and one. For those of you just joining us, you're tuned into Ashland Legion Baseball. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. A one nothing lead for post 77. Matt Gazzard on camera. Connor Donovan had a take off. He had a, another commitment as that one's filed away. So we brought in the relief cameraman. Full count now on Ovid. Ben Thomas due up next. That one low, and that is going to be a walk. Ball briefly got away from the catcher, Crowley. Bases now loaded with two outs, and the cleanup hitter, Ben Thomas, to the plate. He's having a good day, two for two at the plate. Also has an RBI. Trying to add on to this one nothing lead. Upstairs it goes, one and oh. With a side armor, they don't get quite as much time to look at the pitch as his pitching arm is hidden behind his back. Lefty awaits the pitch. Inside, two and oh. He may get an RBI for not even swinging the bat. Yeah, right now I'm holding the bat with the 2-0 and o count. Unless I see something you just can't resist. And he saw that one up the first baseline. Glove by the first baseman. He'll tag the bag. And that will wrap up the inning. After four innings of play, it is Ashland post 77-1. Low post 87 nothing. It's Ashland the Legion Baseball and HCAM and WACA. Top of the fifth inning. Roll coming up to the plate. 7, 8, and 9 do up. Matt Smith, who took over in right field after starting the game on the mound, up at the plate. Takes ball one. As he is going to follow that one away, one and one. Sean Babineau out for his second inning of work. Leg lift and the pitch. That one outside, two and one. Smith, Theralt, and Ward do up four, post 87. That's fouled away, two and two. Wind up and the pitch. That one's fouled away. Good battle going on here. Nice breaking pitch look like from here. Babineau must have been schooled in the art of pitching because at 145 pounds, he certainly has got a hose for an arm. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the middle, takes a hop on the infield grass. What a play by the shortstop. The throw not there in time, but wow. Horning to even get to that ball. That was unbelievable. He had to put on the brakes and put up his hand. Got it. And still had a chance to throw him out. If you made that play, that is the defensive play of the season right there. Derek Theralt will step in. Runner on first. No outs. Let's see how much of a lead the low runners want to get with Babineau over there. Babineau already picked someone off. There's a bunt foul. Oh, and one on Theralt. Theralt looking up the line at his coach, getting the call. Dylan O'Leary in. Runner taking off, it's a bunt. Infield grass picked up by Babino. He turns around and the throw a little bit off the mark, but a great job by Pesson keeping his foot on the bag. I thought he was safe myself, but nope. you'll have to go into the replay booth. I, th I think he uh, pulled his foot off the bag. I was watching his foot. I think it stayed. All right. We'll agree to disagree. I thought I saw daylight. We'll, we'll have to watch the tape. 
Chris Ward, who took over on the mound, and came in from right field to step in. Runner now on second with one out. Lefty Sean Babino set the deal. And that is foul towards the little bench. Coach had to hop out of the way. Set the deal, looks at second runner leading off. Breaking pitch, nice drop there, but drop too low, one and one. Tumaniski needs to keep that runner close, at least clap his glove or throw some dirt on the. And this is going to go up the right side, glove by the first baseman, flip to Babino, two away. Three to one on that ground out. He took a good angle to the bag, just like a college player would do. Plenty of pitchers fielding practice, PFP. Smith did move up to third. Freddie Kozalski, the leadoff hitter and center fielder at the plate now. Lefty, lefty matchup. There's a strike. Babineau does drop down a little bit. That one low. One and one. That one low as well, two and one. Strike two, grab the inside corner. Babineau delivers. Swinging strike, and he got him. That will retire the side on the top of the fifth. It is a 1-0 post-77 lead as they are coming up next on the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth inning. 077 back up at the plate. Five, six, and seven to come up. Zach Pesson will start things off, the first baseman. Out for his second inning of work on the mound, it's Chris Ward. The sidewinder. And he is set to deal. That one upstairs. Zach Pesson, Dylan O'Leary, and Sean Jewett do up this inning. Leg lift and the pitch. Fouled away into the umpire. And he'll Ooh, walk courtesy. that one off. Yep. Catcher doing his thing. Looks like he took that right in the chest area. Or maybe the arm. Yeah, he's waving his left hand. His right hand, excuse me. Yeah, right off the arm it went. But he's okay. He appreciates the catcher's courtesy. Taps him on the back. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. One and two. For young sidearm pitchers, if you can't find the strike zone, it's going to be very difficult to find it. And this is popped up. Infield grass, first baseman ranging over, makes the catch, one away. Dylan O'Leary will step in. Called the pitcher off of that one and make the catch. Leg lift and the pitch. Inside, 1-0. and oh. As a Hopkinton Hiller, he may have had a chance for live BP against Cole Drake's back. There's a sidewinder. 
Lefty deals to the lefty and it's inside. Line up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Lays that one by him. Set to deliver. There's strike two. Two and two. Ward deals. Just low, full count. The decisive pitch. In there, four strike three, two away. Dylan O'Leary certainly didn't think so. Yeah, he wasn't a fan of that call. Sean Jewett will step in. Wind up and the pitch. Breaking pitch inside, 1-0. and It's turned into more of a pitcher's duel these last few innings. Well, Ashland hasn't helped itself with leaving nine men on. That's certainly true. Swinging strike there on a nasty breaking ball, one and one. Just can't play him tonight. Line up and the pitch. Up the left side along the line, bobbled by the third baseman, and there will be no play as Jewett will reach. Tough play to make in either case. You always say that, Tom. Tough play, tough play, tough play. Well, that wasn't an easy play. All right. What are you giving that one? Base we'll, hit. We'll go with you on this. Base hit. That's what I'm giving it to. Brad Seymour will step in. I got him down for five errors. That's pretty good. <laughs> Runner leading off of first. There's a strike. Seymour one for two today. Singled and stole a base in the second. Grounded out in the fourth. Be nice to see what his pickoff move is. He gets a little extra half step over there. He big even has a pickoff move. Big lead from first. And that is foul. 0-2. Oh you like to see the pickoff move. Guys on the bench should know what he's what he's got and what he doesn't have. Runner once again leading off of first. That one is foul. Off his foot again. He's going to have to see Dr. Shaw. Just past 7.30. And you have to think if this game continues to be a lengthy affair, daylight could become an issue. As that one's fouled away. Line up and the pitch. That one's fouled away. Good battle here. Now it remains 0 and 2. Fouled off into those packed bleachers over there on the Lowell side. Ward from the stretch. Jewett leading off of first. There's strike three, got him looking. And that will wrap up the fifth to the sixth we go. It is one nothing Ashland leading roll. Top of the sixth inning, two, three, and four due up for low post 87, Max Gilman, Thomas Crowley, and Zach Gishier. As a shortstop, 
He'll step in. He's one for two today, grounded out and singled. Sean Babineau out there for his third inning of work today. A one nothing Ashland lead. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. A 1-0 pitch. And that is fouled away. The 1-1. One, one. Low. 2 and 1. That one fouled away. 2 and 2. Off the catcher. Leave one off his mask, and Jewett's going to take a minute to come out and talk with Babineau. You think Jewett got sh shooken up a little bit by that one? I think he's out there for a, a little bit of a rest, but I can't imagine him playing JV all season. With all the rainouts they had in May, to have their varsity catcher play it all. As this is hit in the air, a high fly ball, foul out of play. Especially with the skills he's shown me so far. Yeah, he's been impressive. And this is down third baseline, foul. Count remains two and two. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, that'll fill it up. Just a little bit inside. Babineau deals. And this is hit in the air right side, and that'll drop down, and it is going to be foul. Count remains full. I don't know whether Babineau is on a pitch count. Coach Johnson at the end of the last inning said he is at 26. Full count pitch. And this is up the left side. Glove by O'Leary. Throw to first. Got him. Five to three on the first out. And I'll bring up Thomas Crowley, the catcher. Crowley 0 for 2 so far today. Grounded out to short both times. Babineau delivers. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. Leg lift and the pitch. Strike two. Got Gassed him. him. Nasty stuff. Babineau gets the sign. There it is, strike three. Three straight pitches, three straight strikes, two outs. Yeah, that was a mismatch there. Zach Gishier to step in. Babineau with two strikeouts this evening. Came in in the fourth. As this is hit in the air, that'll drop down in right field for a base hit. Gishier going to round first, but stay put. A two-out single. Nice job by Tavinsky going out there to get the cut. The sixth hit of the ball game for Lowell. Mark Beelan, the third baseman, due up. Umpire calls time to brush off home plate. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one. Babineau looks at first, runner leading off. Lefty deals. 
Up the middle, right back to Babineau. He'll take a stroll over to first. The flip, no problem. One to three goes Beeland, and that will wrap up the top of the sixth. We will head to the bottom of the inning. Ashland leading 1-0. Bottom of the sixth inning, 9-1 and 2 due up for post 77. Ethan Tominski, the second baseman, to start things off, followed by Jackson Horning, the shortstop, and Ronan Bates, the DH. Chris Ward out there for his third inning of work. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one. Ward has pitched, excuse me, Ward has actually only pitched uh, one and a third as this is hit in the air to right field and arranging in to make the catch is the right fielder, Matt Smith, one away. That'll bring up Jackson Horning. He crushed the ball the last time he was up. Hit a long double. There's a strike. In that inning, uh, post 77 left the bases loaded. That was the fourth inning. They've left 10 men on base so far in this one. We'll see if it comes back to bite them. As this is up the right side, past the first baseman, and that is going to be a base hit for Horning. A one-out single. Ronan, um, Ronan Bates to step in. I want to say that was an E3. That go he did an old leg. I wasn't sure if that went through his leg or by him. Uh, he just did the old leg. All right, we'll give him the error. Got to even out the errors, right? It's right, it makes <laughs> half a dozen errors is a nice number. They must have a pretty rough fielding percentage. Bates looking for his first hit today. Runner leading off of first. Slices that one foul, 0-2. I'm not sure how much experience the young man at first base has had. He doesn't get a hard shuffle off when a pitcher goes to the plate, just a step or two. Ward looks over at first. Big lead by the speedy Horning. He's taking off, swinging strike, and that is going to be out number two. Horning does end up at second. Runner in scoring position again. Oh, bit up to the plate, having a pretty good day. One for two at the plate, walked, singled, and scored a run. Takes ball one. On his single, there was a two base error by the left fielder, one right under his glove. Morning leading off of second. Outside, two and oh. Bobid reaches, Ben Thomas due up. Line up and the pitch. Outside it goes. Three and O. Oh. It'd be tough to throw out Jackson. He's getting a really, really greedy lead over there at second base. Catcher would have to pop up and throw around Obid. Set to deliver. There's strike one. Wanted to pull the trigger on that pitch. He's a little bit upset with himself. Checking at second, runner back safe. Pretty decent spin move. I think Jackson will just get that greedy lead again. Set to deal. There's a called strike. I think Coach Johnson's going to send Jackson on this pitch. Full count pitch. There's strike three. He got him. And we will head to the top of the seventh. Lowell down to their final three outs. It is a 1-0 post-77 lead on <laughs> HCAM or WACA in Ashland. 
top of the seventh inning. Roll post 87 down to their final three outs, trailing one to nothing. Sean Babineau back out there to try to close it out. And stepping in is Johnny Donovan, the left fielder. He takes strike one. Now Lowell has made six errors on the day. And Johnny Donovan has made three of them. And he is at the plate with a chance to turn it all around here if he can get on base and score the game tying run. The 0-2 pitch fouled away. Coach Johnson has already ordered his guys no double, so that'll bring the first baseman in on the corner. Dylan O'Leary on the line. And the, um, the outfield is playing a little bit deeper. And he pops this one up, and it's caught by the second baseman, one away. Now Ashland has left 11 runners on base, but they are two outs away from claiming the victory as Matt Smith will step in. Strike one. Babino deals, fouled away, 0-2. Oh this game's been a pretty lengthy affair, approaching the two hour mark. Wind up and the pitch, upstairs, one and two. Good waste pitch, make him chase. Oh, Just I thought he was slow. gonna get rung up there. Yeah, that could have went either way. Two and two. There it is. And that is two outs. Smith not happy. And it is up to Derek Theralt to keep this game going. Did you would pick that out of the dirt. Didn't have to throw down at first. Ashland trying to improve to three and one on the young season. Strike one. That's a beautiful breaking pitch right there. I think he was looking for dead red. Fouled away. Down to the last strike. Babineau might be at 40 or 45 pitches. Well, between Jonathan and uh, Jonathan Pesson and Sean Babineau, they have pitched a gem. And there is strike three, the throw down, no problem. He got him, and that is the ball game. Despite leaving 11 runners on, Ashland Post 77 gets the one to nothing victory over Lowell Post 87. Pretty impressive stuff to say the least. And there certainly was not a whole lot of offensive action, so we can get to the recap. Right now, the only run of the ball game was scored in the bottom of the third. Jake Obid singled, and then Ben Thomas came up and drove him in with an RBI single of his own. That was the only run of the game. Jonathan Pess and Sean Babineau combined to pitch a gem. Babineau ended up coming in relief in the fourth inning, and he pitched four innings of the ball game. And he pitched shutout baseball those four innings and struck out four hitters. And Pesson, the starter, also pitched very well. He gave up four hits, but was able to get out of every jam he was put in. And this was a tough victory for post 77, but they certainly earned it as they grabbed the one nothing victory over Lowell post 87. Lowell falls to 0-2 on the season. Ashland is now three and one. The final score for the final time, Ashland defeats Lowell by a final score of one nothing. Ashland scores one run on eight hits, commits no errors. Lowell scores no runs on six hits and commits six errors. Fielding was a big part of the problems for Lowell today, but post 77 with the big well needed victory. 
for Matt Gazzard on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this broadcast of Ashland Legion Baseball, and we will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.